In a move that comes as something of a surprise to many, Apple is apparently in talks with Google to have Gemini powering AI on the iPhone. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. We've talked extensively on this show about the laggard that is Apple's strategy when it comes to AI. Most specifically, however, we've been talking about recently how it seems like it is finally trying to catch up to put into practice its very own slant on things. For example, we've recently seen Apple actually using AI speak in marketing when it comes to things like their M3 chips and their new laptops. Obviously, the biggest shift that we've seen in Apple's strategy over the last few weeks is their move to kill their electric vehicles project, Project Titan, despite the fact that they've spent over $10 billion in 10 years on it and shifted many of those resources over into generative AI. All of those moves are why it comes as a surprise to some that Bloomberg and others now are reporting that Apple is in talks with Google to have Gemini power certain AI features on the iPhone. This is of course not confirmed, it's based on Bloomberg sources, but those sources characterize this as an active negotiation to let Apple license Gemini to power certain iPhone features this year. This of course would build on another deal between the two companies, where Google has paid Apple billions annually to have Google as the default option on the Safari browser on iPhone. But it sounds like it's not as clear-cut as just an extension of that deal. Writes Bloomberg, the two parties haven't decided the terms or branding of an AI agreement or finalized how it would be implemented. According to these same sources, Apple had also held talks with OpenAI about a similar relationship. This would obviously be a huge deal for Google. Apple has more than 2 billion devices in active use right now, which is obviously just a major distribution channel for Google's AI. Interestingly, there have been really different responses to this news. Markets are loving it. Alphabet shares were up as much as 7.4% as the markets opened to this news. Apple was also up 2.2%. A BI senior industry analyst, Mandeep Singh, writes, Apple's potential use of Google Gemini for generative AI inferencing further lowers the risk of any near-term market share loss for the latter in search. We believe Apple's current deal with Google, which pays $20 billion in traffic acquisition costs on iOS devices, gives the latter an incumbent advantage over GenAI-based search competitors, including OpenAI, which rely on Bing for real-time links to web pages. Wedbush's Dan Ives writes, This potential Google strategic partnership is a missing piece in the Apple AI strategy and combines forces with Google for Gemini to power some of the AI features Apple is bringing to market. For Apple, this will give them the foundation and blueprint to double down on AI features. Darrell Bassano writes, 2024 is the year Apple faced its limitations, first giving up the dream of competing with Tesla in EVs, and now conceding it can't compete with Google and OpenAI in generative AI. This means iOS users end up winning as we get actual cutting-edge features and not Siri warmed over. Robert Scoble tried to give a more nuanced take that showed why this could be a good deal for Apple. He writes, Apple gets to win with new Siri. Its own models are highly controlled, I hear trained on synthetic data, so we'll give accurate answers, but only on specific topics. If a question pops up that goes outside of that pre-done data set, it'll punt to Google. Sorry, Apple's own models can't answer that question, so we went to Google Gemini, here is the answer. This way, answers that have hallucinations can come from Google and Apple can wash its hands of those. Just my theory in talking to a bunch of people about this. Huge news shows that Apple can still come in and change the industry. That said, when it comes to people who are in the AI space, the reaction was pretty much exactly the opposite. Nate Chan pointed to a piece from February about how Apple had acquired 32 AI startups last year and wrote, Someone explain to me, what was the point of this then? AI Breakfast writes, Did Apple completely drop the ball when it came to developing in house AI? 100 billion RD war chests and nothing to show for it? Outsourcing to Google's Gemini of all things. Wild. Growing Daniel writes, It's kind of crazy Apple needs to call Google in to compete on AI. Elon was able to spin up Grok pretty quickly, but Apple with $70 billion in cash needs to outsource. Abacus CEO Bindu Reddy writes, Wait, what? Apple can't spin up their own LLMs? Also, are Apple and Google technically competitors, or do they simply collude to run the most powerful tech duopoly in the world? More on that duopoly idea and the potential regulatory implications in just a moment. Brian Romley writes, Apple and Google are in talks to integrate Google's Gemini into the iPhone Bloomberg has reported. If true, it will be the historic mark of the full and long decline of Apple after Steve. It is the work of a money counter and not a brilliant founder. Now, as Bindu brought up with this idea of a tech duopoly, one of the big issues here could be an antitrust issue. Bloomberg again writes, A partnership between the two Silicon Valley giants would likely draw the eye of regulators. Google's current deal with Apple for search is already the focus of a lawsuit by the U.S. Department of Justice. The government has alleged that the companies have operated as a single entity to corner the search market on mobile devices. The pair has justified the arrangement by saying Apple believes Google's search quality is superior to rivals and that it's easy to switch providers on the iPhone. The arrangement between Apple and Google is also under fire in the European Union, which is forcing Apple to make it easier for consumers to change their default search engine away from Google. Fortune said something similar, writing, Looks like Apple will need a partner to go all in on generative AI, but big antitrust issues await. 
Now, some have even gone farther. There is, of course, one more take, represented here by Beth Jezos, who writes, Sam Altman scared Apple and Google enough where they decided to team up and compete. We live in incredible times. Now, according to Bloomberg, even though the talks are in active negotiations, it's likely that the earliest we might hear about a deal would be June at the WWDC conference. Bloomberg also caveats, it's possible that the companies don't reach an agreement or Apple ultimately chooses to go with another generative AI provider like OpenAI. Or Apple could theoretically tap multiple partners as it does with Search in its web browser. Of course, the other possibility is that Apple just does its own thing, right? Before everyone was talking about this, the AI Twitter sphere was all talking about Apple's MM1 model. Tom's Guide writes, At the core, MM1 is a new method for training multimodal models using synthetic data including images and text. The researchers behind MM1 claim their new method speeds up performance and reduces the number of follow-up prompts to get a desired result. Being able to improve prompt understanding and get the desired output with as little interaction with the AI as possible is perfect for consumer tech, especially in Siri, which will be used by a wide group of people with varying degrees of technological prowess. Dr. Jim Fan from NVIDIA writes, We live in such strange times. Apple, a company famous for its secrecy, published a paper with staggering amounts of detail on their multimodal foundation model. Those who are supposed to be open are now way less than Apple. MM1 is a treasure trove of analysis. They discuss lots of architecture designs and even disclose that they train on GPT-4V generated data. They provide exact scaling law coefficients to four significant figures, MOE settings, and even optimal learning rate functions. I have not seen this level of details from a big tech white paper for a very, very long time. Apple's so back. Brandon McKenzie from Apple also tweeted about this, so it's clear that they're not being as cagey as they normally are. So really, with all this news, we're pretty much still out in the woods when it comes to exactly what Apple's strategy is. I'm sure that will get clearer as the year goes on, but for now, it's just a lot of speculation. Anyways, guys, that is going to do it for today's AI Breakdown. Until next time, peace.